Welcome to episode four of our Thai sailing adventure. Our week sailing a catamaran on our own is teaching us so much how the boat handles and today we have a lovely easy passage from our anchorage in Koh Yao Noi. We have about 20 miles with the wind abaft of the beam to take us to an island called Koh Padanok which is off the coast of Krabi. The more time we spend sailing, the more we realize that we are as governed by routines as anyone living on land. Our routine after breakfast is to raise anchor and head off towards our anchorage for this evening. It's 20 miles, we know we've got a good sailing breeze. The only issue is we have a little bit of maintenance to do. Now, for those of you who watch our regular episodes, you will know that one of the things I like to see on a boat are seized shackles. For those of you that don't know, this is using a Monel wire to run through the eye of the shackle pin. It stops them from unfastening at inconvenient times. Now, for those of you who are doing this or going off, please, please do not use zip ties unless you are absolutely in an emergency. The UV will degrade them in under a couple of weeks. Unfortunately, our shackles weren't seized, and so we ended up with a block working its way loose, and that was causing a problem with the main sheet system. Now for us, this was simply a question of sitting on the coach roof, reattaching the shackle and untangling the rat's nest that the main sheet had got itself tangled into. However, this is normally done in a 4-6 on deck in a biting gale because as you know, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen at the worst time possible. So please, if you are sailing, whether it's a charter or whether you are on your own boat, make sure your shackles are seized. And so with the rest of the shackles checked, a free running main sheet and a free running main halyard, we got the sails up and set off the wind abaft the beam, batting along at four gentle knots. A lovely way of spending a morning. I don't need to feel let down by love. Folks are lining up, they're crowding all over see us fall down are you falling down there's no net no wire no catch you climb high my dear stake to the ground lay your bets down i am still right here don't tell me that it's time again time to be my own best friend here in the dream we bought Are you here or not? If it's fading in the twilight Don't leave me alone tonight After all the lines we crossed And all the pain we stopped I'm gonna love you Till the wee hours fall off as our experience of chartering and sailing catamarans grows, people ask us a lot, well, what do you think of it? My honest answer? It feels a little bit like cheating. It is all so easy compared to being on a monohull. Now, we've only really sailed in pretty tranquil waters. On friends' catamarans, we sailed with Nikki and Jason, we sailed with our friend Peter, but this was our first charter. The extra deck space makes it so, so easy to move around the deck. Trimming sails is absolutely a doddle. There is space galore, the boat isn't healing. And while we accept that there are massive limitations to sailing a cruising catamaran like this, it felt as if, well, something was kind of missing. Now for purists, I'm a purist, I'm an absolute monohull purist. I do love the feeling of a boat lifting as the wind hits it and this is really done by numbers. But after five years of living on board, are we willing and happy to exchange the life of a monohull for what we have potentially on a catamaran? Well, I think yes, I think we've earned the right now to move onto a bigger platform that sails more easily and is better and easier to live on. So we're pretty happy. 
The boat sails well, it's high, it's not as pretty as a monohull, but overall this is something that we now are very, very comfortable to transition into. And with the hours flying by as we cruised along these protected waters, it seemed like minutes before we were dropping the anchor in front of our anchorage for the night. It is often said in sailing circles that a test of your relationship is how well you anchor as a team. Whether you use the Shania Twain style headsets or just a series of hand signals, Teresa and I, after all these years, hope that we have our anchoring technique down pat. Although I will say that when it does go wrong, occasionally things do revert to how, shall we say, well, different hand signals. But anyway, we circled around, we found a depth that we were comfortable with, free from hazards and obstructions, and drop the anchor into about 10 meters of water. The bridle was attached and with the bridle firmly attached we reversed gently with the engine just to fill the anchor bed in. That gives us a lot of security when we're going ashore knowing that if the engine can't shift the anchor then wind probably will not. As creatures of habit, when we day sail, we try to get anchored up by lunchtime. That allows us a quick swim, a quick sunbathe, and then once we've tidied the boat and got everything stowed, we head ashore. The floating pontoon was home to lots and lots of long-tailed boats. These bring tourists from the popular resort of Krabi to this little island. It is famous for being bohemian, and for there being very very few accommodation areas but it's famous for rock climbing so if you're into rock climbing this is the place to be i'm not much of a climber however there were some bars along the beach and a good walk round to just explore the beauty of the nature of this tiny little island was all we required from our afternoon i'm gonna take this little house and make a home and then i'll never have to face you're into climbing in high or you're climbing yeah. yeah, we can see where we're going to climbing one of these vertical rock faces. I think I've never climbed anything, I've been the best place to start, is it? <laughs> so with me politely declining an afternoon climb up a sheer rock face, there was only one thing left to do. Find one of the local bamboo built bars, sit and get a cold drink to cool us off in the afternoon heat, sit and talk about our day and get some filming done. We really were having a pretty relaxing time. <laughs> I'm pulling loaves of bread down from the shell. And how rare it is that I stay up past 12. In the backyard, we are going to start a garden. If that don't sound mighty good, I beg your pardon. It's in my heart I hear you speak. And on my face I feel you breathe. You're looking extremely relaxed. Happy? Oh, just to get out of humidity, it's nice. Yeah. How's that bee going down? Flat out like a lizard drinking. I'm not even sure what that means. I heard it on a Foster's advert. Now, if they don't love us, we don't need them. Let's find our own brand of freedom. They don't love us, we and don't so need with them. the sun setting, the long-tailed boats leaving with their tourists, we decided to sit, enjoy one last beer, and as the sun dipped below the skyline, the sky changed through pinks to blues to mauves to purples. Really, who needs television when you have such an amazing vista? I could have sat and watched this over and over again. But eventually night falls, and we decided to head back to the boat to cook on board. Anymore, anymore. Hello, <laughs> welcome to us cooking. Or well, not cooking, no cooking, definitely cooking. Uh, we have been very, very lucky in being able to purchase these from a local fisherman. So the local fisherman sold us about a kilo of like massive, massive tiger prawns the other day. So we have a lot of these little beauties. And so for dinner, 
Theresa has demanded um, a Thai curry. So Thai curry it is, and for Thai curry we need a couple of things. We need one lime, one shallot, three chilies, one lovely, beautiful, juicy stalk of galangal, uh, kaffir lime leaves, and of course lemongrass. So that's that. We've also got coconut milk and nampla. And vegetables, please. And vegetables. Miniature Thai aubergines. Lovely. Yeah? Yeah. So Thai aubergines, galangal, coconut milk. We'll get this all fried off and started. Now for us, our Thai curry starts by finely chopping the ingredients. A finely chopped shallot, the galangal is cubed really rough lumps will do here the same goes with the chili peppers we like our food particularly spicy but we found those thai chilies to be insanely hot so we don't use the seeds in addition to that the lemongrass is split down the middle and also chopped a little bit we find that the more you kind of beat up the lemongrass the more the flavor comes out it's also pretty important to fry this stuff off the reason we fry the ingredients first is the increased heat of the oil over say water or coconut milk allows the flavor of the oils to permeate through so you get the much more flavor from the lemongrass and the galangal if you fry everything off first so with our ingredients cut cubed and diced a little bit of frying of the chilies and then everything goes into a pot with the coconut milk for about 20 minutes it's pretty easy and then five minutes before serving we put the prawns in prawns really don't take that long to cook and they're rubbery if overcooked so that's the last stage five minutes to cook that up and then we can serve dinner serve with a cold beer not a bad way of spending an evening i think you'll agree if they don't love us, we don't need them well, Let's find our own brand of freedom well, I don't mind the slow down anymore don't mind the sound of my shoes on your floor anymore, anymore. And on my face, I feel you breathe. And if you enjoyed this episode, feel free to join us next week when we finally catch up with our friends over at Sailing Nanji. We have been chasing them around these islands for a few days now. We have so much in common, just generally yeah. YouTube aside, like Australians, I kind of, do I get the, am I like an honorary Australian yeah. yet? Yeah. All right, so that. So now that that pressing issue has been resolved once and for all, we also set off sailing after leaving Nanji and get caught out in the mother of all squalls. The fishing fleet are zigzagging in front of us with almost zero visibility. It's pretty hairy considering it's not our boat and we've never really sailed a catamaran. This squall is just not letting up. We've also got our tips and thoughts on sailing Asia and sailing around Thailand. So feel free to give us a like or a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you want to see the other things that we do and the notification bell means that you will never miss another episode. See you again. Anymore, anymore.